Okay, hey guys, welcome to week 10 on the Underwater Realm video blog. And this week we're going to be talking a little bit about storyboarding, which is an area that I find really, really exciting about filmmaking. It's also one of the areas I find the most difficult. Um, and it's the point at which you take your script and you, you now break the barrier of telling stories with words and allowing people's imaginations to make it look beautiful, and you start casting some pictures in stone. Um, and you actually start telling your story with pictures for the first time. So it can be hugely creatively challenging, um, and it can lead the wrong parts of your brain to start procrastinating and giving you thousands of reasons not to do it and not to do it quickly. Uh, so I'm going to give you some of the tips that I've come up with over the years to kind of under overcome those creative demons and, and actually start getting the juices flowing and getting some, some pictures down on paper. So, ground rules. Number one. Storyboarding is not about creating nice images. It's not about creating something for your DVD extras, and it is sure as hell not about creating something that's going to go in a Dorling Kindersley book. It is about creating a blueprint to tell your cast and tell your crew and tell your post-production facility what the shots are going to look like. Okay, so this is a really, really fundamental thing. But we're actually going to take that one step further, and to get you started, don't worry about showing a single other living, breathing human being the drawings that you're doing, because that takes all the pressure off. If you're anything like me, if I know that anybody's going to be looking at these pictures, I'm going to spend 20-30 minutes shading them, getting the texturing just right, maybe getting some ink wash pens and making a really nice picture that I'd hang on the wall at the end of the day. Do not go there. I've been there. It takes forever. You never get it finished. And you get really creatively attached to the drawings, not their place in the storyline. So you're unwilling to throw them away if that's what's necessary. So, without further ado, you've got your script. Get a load of tatty A4 paper, it really does not matter. In many ways, the tattier the better, because it means you are less attached to it, and you're less precious about it. You're going to fold this piece of paper in half across its width. And what you've created now is a rough booklet. Um, pencils. I really like these graphics pencils, because I hate it when pencils go blunt, but, you know, whatever works for you. Um, and you're going to draw ten frames on this piece of paper and you can tell any story this way they do not have to be measured they do not have to have straight edges they do not have to be done with a ruler they do not have to be exactly 16 by 9 or 235 to 1 they can be very very rough and I'm not joking I literally use boards this rough okay, there's no point in downloading and printing things out because all it's going to do is distract you and give you something else to procrastinate about finding the right form and what you should put on the form that's all you need. So, at this point, you're just creating images so you can understand what the hell you have drawn. And so you can read your story back and you can see that picture in your mind's eye. So, we're going to create, there's a few little tips here, um, but we're going to create a really basic board. We're going to have a man looking down on the street and seeing an apple with a bite taken out of it on the street and then reaching down for that apple. So, it literally takes images like this. This is a man's face. He is looking down, here are his shoulders. We go into his POV, we see the pavement, we see his foot, we see an apple with a bite taken out of it, lying on the street by his feet. We cut back to his face. He's looking confused, and we're going to put a big question mark next to his head to show that he's looking confused. He looks down, we cut to a close-up, we cut to a macro of the apple, so a big old chunky bite taken out, and maybe there's a maggot crawling out of the apple. Um, we're then back in looking up at the man and his hand is reaching down into frame as he looks down still confused we are talking images literally this simple okay I don't care if none of you at home can tell what these pictures are I can and that's what's important you've got to develop your own shorthand and tips like I borrow the, the whole sweat bead from from anime if somebody's stressed or worried they have a sweat bead occasionally draw some eyebrows in to create mood using the question mark. You can denote camera, um, camera dynamics by creating arrows going from left to right, or going up and down, or pushing in. If I wanted a shot to push in, I'd do this. Very, very, very straightforward. Another thing that's really, really useful um, for actually kind of accounting these shots and working out how many setups you're going to need to do is to join them together if they're actually the same angle then join them together with lines so that you can understand that these three are actually part of the same shot. These two are two different shots. So even though I've done five drawings, I've only got three setups there. And that's a really important thing to know as you move down the chain. 
So you do that, and you've only drawn these boards on one side, so you fill your ten, and then you give yourself a creative reward. You've done one page, okay? You open it out, you fold it back, and you draw another ten. You do them, you've done another page. So you get four mini rewards just for doing one sheet of A4 paper. You've done 40 individual drawings. You then move on and continue to tell the rest of your story. So I've got some here. These are the ones I'm using for the Underwater Realm. This is one of the scripts that we storyboarded. Um, and there's over 300 drawings here. And they won't make sense to anybody except me. Um, I've got a couple of gaps here. Now the important thing here is that I can read this like a storybook and I can understand the story, I can look through it and I can play it in my mind's eye and if that's not enough I can scan these in and I can animate them all, I can edit them, I can understand what areas the story need truncating, what areas need expanding, what areas need more close-ups perhaps because it doesn't make sense. Um, absolutely incredibly powerful, incredibly cheap way of creating your story. Um, really, really exciting part of storytelling. And then once you've done this, once you've done your job as a director, because frankly, if you're not willing to pick up a piece of paper, a piece, if you're not willing to pick up a pencil and put it to a piece of paper and start directing the pencil, you are not ready to direct a set of 50 people. If you can't draw your image and create it in the world like that, you are never going to be able to create, get a crew of people to actually build this story for you. So, once you've done that, by all means, go and hire an artist, give him your storyboards, talk him through your shorthand, talk him through every single frame if you need to, and he can create a really, really lovely drawing that you can hang on the wall. Or, do it yourself and give yourself a time limit of two minutes. What I really like to do, I don't have any here, I'm afraid, but um, get some 6 by 10s or some 8 uh, by 4 poster cards, just index cards like this. Um, at this point, yeah, sure, measure up your 16 by 9 frame and spend a while. Spend a while creating a nice image and then shade it up, label it, give it a even a lens setting. Give it a, say we want this one on a 50 to 85 mil lens and leave it down to the DOP, whatever you like. At that point, you're creating something for your cast and crew to look at and maybe even for investors to look at if you want to have some nice stuff in there to go with your concept art. But this, this is my secret of storyboarding. This is low pressure, high speed, and it's so quick that if you if you create an image that you are not happy with, and you decide that the close-up shot of the apple is too much and is unnecessary, that doesn't take any effort. Shooting that, and then cutting it out of the movie does take effort. Drawing this, spending an hour drawing a close-up and getting the reflections in the apple just right, and then tearing it up requires effort. What I just did there is moments, and it's achieved exactly the same thing. It's had no extra bearing on the quality of the film. It's just given me more time and an easier way to create my story. So, that is storyboarding. Um, there'll be updates on this as we move forward, because I'm actually doing storyboarding at the moment, as you can see. Um, and so, we will show you some over the next few weeks. But for now, that's us. And we will see you next week on theunderwaterrealm.com.